Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. Today we are in Luminar Neo, we are in an edit module and we are looking at the essential tools and more specifically the details tool right here. Now details tool can look a little bit overwhelming, but once you understand all the sliders, you can find out that it's a really, really handy tool that can help to add interest into your images. First of all, the details tool is here to help you to create the dramatic photos and bring crystal clear sharpness to your images with the proper detail enhancement you can make your photos look sharp with no halos and artifacts. Now, I think what I like about this uh, tool the most is the fact that you can actually uh, adjust the details locally based on their size rather than your usual sharpening uh, slider. So I think that is very handy and you will understand what I mean by that in a moment. Anytime we're working on a digital photos and we're working on a screen, the first thing we want to do is to zoom in to at least 100%. That can be done multiple ways, but one of the ways is uh, here at the bottom of the screen, there is this little arrow. You click on that and you just dial the 100%. So that will be handy. This picture is great for details because it's full of texture and it's full of details all over the place. So we will use it to start and we will use it to describe the different sliders. So now let's focus on the actual toolbar here. As you can see, there are small details, medium details, large details and sharpen. So let's start with the sharpen. The sharpen tool helps to focus soft edges in a photo to increase the clarity of focus. Uh, this tool can be used to significantly improve image quality and you have to really uh, remember and keep in your mind that when you overdo it, uh, the photo can start to look a little bit grainy. The sharpening is still a great tool, don't take me wrong, and it's a great starting point. You can just push it. And what it does, it finds soft edges of different elements on the image and it tries to sharpen them. So um, really up to you how far you want to go. If you think that you can't really see the result, you can zoom even more further and look around. Now, the one downfall of the sharpening, once again, is that it will sharpen every single object in the image. So that's the sharpening slider. Again, with all the sliders, when you double click on their name, they will reset to zero or to their default value. Now let's turn our focus towards the small, medium and large details. Starting with the small details, as you guess, this slider sets the sharpness of fun details on the image. Now when it's at zero, as you can see right here, the tool is not applied. However, moving the slider to the right, increase the clarity of small details. And then obviously, moving it to the other side it washes out the fine details so let's zoom in again um, we are on 100% let's go even a little further and we will push the small details all the way to the 100 let me show you before and after and you can really see specifically at this part and on the little shutters how it really pushes the details out and we can do the same thing the other way around. Let's push the small details the other way around. And you can see how everything becomes soft and blurry. And this is really important to remember that you not only sharpen the details here, but you can also make them a little bit softer if your edit requires it. Moving on the next slider, we have the medium details. So let's zoom out again. Let's talk about medium details. This slider sets the sharpness of medium sized details. Again, when you add a zero, the tool is obviously not applied and moving it to the right, it increases the clarity of the medium sized details and moving it to the left, it will decrease them and it make them a little bit softer. We zoom in right here. 
and again shift the medium details all the way and you can see how it makes all so much sharper and full of details let me show you before and after i think it's really cool this tool is incredible because you can really sharpen your photo and then jump in and do these fine adjustments here and really give your photo a punch so we will bring that back and finally let's talk about large details so the large details and its slider actually sets the sharpness of the global shapes of the objects in the image so this is the kind of main guy this kind of sets the sharpness of all the details so you really want to be careful with this one because it will have a quite big impact let's again zoom in somewhere right here and we will push the large details all the way through it's really like punching the clarity and sharpness at the same time let me show you before and after it's very cool but when we zoom out you can see how it's starting to look really over processed and you really want to be careful there as you imagine when you go the other way around you make the picture look a little bit softer so those were the main sliders right here generally when i use them i'm keen to stay around 10 20 on the all of them except the sharpness the sharpness you need to see what's required however it's really a very handy tool that can be used for many different projects now we turn our attention to the detail masking and sharpening masking first of all as you can see they are grayed out and the reason being that they are connected with different slider the details masking is connected with these three sliders and as they are on a zero right now you can use this tool the sharpening masking is connected to the sharpen tool and again because the sharpen is on zero the sharpening masking is grayed out as you can see when i push the small details immediately it becomes available so let's talk about what it does let's zoom in right here we are going to push the small details all the way so we can see it clearly and now we have a two options in our details masking so the first slider right here is called details protection and really it is here to ensure that the areas of the image are an over processed as you can see when we look at the image when we look at it before and after after it's starting to look really over processed and really over sharpened and that's when this slider come in and can help it's a lot to do with the calculation of the edges clarity sharpening and everything together and you really need to try by yourself to see what works the best for you there is no suggested value you just need to go and see what applies to the current image. Uh, the next option we have here is called details masking and the details masking is a dynamic tool allowing you to reveal details only in appropriate areas and can help you to define the sharpness in your image now in overall the optimal masking value is usually between 30 and 70 and really what this tool helps with and uh, what it does is uh, making sure that you're not sharpening areas which maybe don't have any details on them like skies or water and when there is more of these areas you really want to push the detail masking and when really the full image is full of details you just want to leave it on 50 or go somewhere around 30. when you push it all the way down really the application go and sharpen everything and unless that's your artistic goal i would just leave it somewhere between 30 and 50. And finally, the last part of this tool called sharpening masking. Again, grayed out right now because our sharpening is on zero. So let's just reset this and let's push the sharpening to somewhere around. 70 to make it nice and sharp and starting with the radius here so the radius probably not the most used slider however this slider allows you to adjust the size of sharpening area around the edge you are sharpening now you have to use this carefully because um, it will make again the picture a little bit over process now to understand it a little bit further you have to imagine a line or edge of an element and uh, the radius makes sure that it only sharpens the line however more you push the radius the line will become wider it will sharpen more areas around it so i hope this is clear in my experience i would leave it somewhere between 40 and 60. don't push it any further because then again you're sharpening areas which are not supposed to be sharp and to finish it off again masking which is very similar to the details masking this slider controls the zone in which details are applied moving it to the left increase the size of the zone and making it much more detailed moving it to the right reduce the size of the zone of sharpened areas 
So this is quite clear and very similar to the details masking. So let's just quickly jump into the catalog and we will grab this picture right here. And I think this is a great example of what you would use the masking for. Uh, we are in details here and when we push the sharpness, because that's totally what you want to do, you want to have all of this sharp because really with the long exposure, that would create the contrast. It's the contrast between the long exposure and the soft elements here and the very sharp area here. But by pushing the sharpness, you are also starting to sharpen the water and the sky. And by doing that, as we mentioned earlier, you're introducing noise and grain to your image. So how to reduce that? How to only say that you want to sharpen the sharp elements right here is to use the masking. And really, you can push it all the way to see the difference. And as you can see, we really remove lots of the noise from the sky. However, we kept the sharpening on the rocks right here. How is it usually used? Um, really, you need to see with your camera what works the best, because in general, once you discover the ideal masking point, it's really similar for all your photos. I'm usually staying between 70 and 80. So this was the details tool, really cool way to adjust local details by using the small, medium and large details and also tackle the sharpening of your image while having full control over these elements by using the details masking and sharpening masking. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.